Welcome to my tutorial. Let me show you how to set up an avatar to be able to do this. Let's get started. Now before we begin, I just gotta say, this isn't something that you can do in public. You need to contact somebody outside of NEOS who has the petrification stuffs that you need to get. You're not going to find it in some public world. This is a kink. This is not something that people are doing because it's some cool status effect. If you're new to NEOS and you don't know what this is, uh, you're going to have to learn a few things first. We're just going to go over the basics of how to do this. We're not going to go into the in-depth details of every single little component and how NEOS works and teach you to play the game. You need to know already. I'll leave some links in the description on what you can do if you need to start from square one. A lot of things here, you don't need to know why they work, how they work. Just follow along with what I'm doing. I'll tell you what buttons to push. We'll make it happen. Yeah. Now at the start of the video, we show the bowl when it's finished and it has a cool transitional effect that goes up its body. That requires Substance Painter, that requires work on the side, and I'll probably do another video on how to set that up. So now here we have a nice big bowl, ready to go, be set up for statuification. With the new system, I'll be able to get turned into anything, really. But we do need a default material, which we have over here. So get into the material property of a default material that you want to get turned into. In this case, I'm going with stone, and I show you a little trick on how to make it really nice. Now, if I were to take this material in my material gun and fire it at the avatar, see the stone. It looks okay, but we're going to make it look a little bit better. If we take the normal map from the avatar and put it and replace the normal of the material that it's going to get turned into, well, you're going to see the effect with that. Suddenly now it's keeping all these different fur outlines. It looks really nice. If we play around with the scale, maybe turn it up a notch, then all of a sudden we got these deep grooves in the statue. Sometimes it looks better deeper, sometimes not. Play around with it, but you'll get a nice cool effect. If you've got multiple textures on your avatar, you'll want to do that for that too, if you want to use this method. One of the things you're going to need from someone else is the petrification folder. It has all the setup stuff in it. In it, you're going to find this. It's got an inspector ready to go, so you can start dragging and dropping things from this to it. All right, now we're going to need ourselves a dev tool from the Essential Tools folder. Select the avatar, go to Open Inspector, go to the root of the object, click on this button here. We're going to keep this handy right next to this other inspector, because we're going to be dropping stuff from this to it. Grab, statuification, and drop it on the root name. This adds it to the hierarchy. Do this for statue add-ons as well, and then you don't need this anymore. I'm going to delete this box. Now we're going to want to have a second pane open so we can drag and drop from one to the other. I'm going to do this by taking bowl base, going over here, pressing primary, and now we have two different panes looking at the same thing. We're going to open up statuification, statue add-ons, because we're going to be adding things to all the different setups that are in here. There's a setup there and there. All right, we're not going to start at the top of the list. Vision alpha is going to be something we worry about later. We're going to worry about Volume Normal and Volume Whisper. Double-click the word Head Proxy. We're going to scroll down until we see there's some volume settings under Avatar Output Manager. Whisper Volume, Normal Volume, Shout Volume, Broadcast Volume. We're going to go over here to Normal, Config, and grab the Word Volume. We don't grab the slider, we grab the Word. Drop it in here. We're going to grab Shout Config's Volume. Drop it in here. We're going to grab the Broadcast Config Volume. Drop it in here. It's up to you if you even want to disable any of these things. But as a statue, you probably don't want to talk. You might want to keep your whisper bubble up, though. It's kind of nice to see that a bubble might appear around a statue saying, hey, I want to talk to somebody, but I don't want to break character. But just for the sake of this, we will set it up that the avatar won't even be able to whisper when they're statuified. Double-click on Volume Whisper, grab the volume for whispering, and drop it into that list. That's step one. Now we're going to work on Smooth Transform, Speed and active. This is what makes your hands slow down when you get petrified. We need to create a component for this. And these are going to be in the left and the right hand proxies. If you've got full body tracking and you want to add it to the other proxies that you might have trackers for, go for it. Otherwise, most people just have a left and right hand controller. We want to attach a component to the target, not the word proxy, but the target underneath it. Attach component. This is going to be transform, drivers, scroll down to smooth transform. Give it a good old double click. Now let's repeat that for the right hand proxy. Double click target. Attach component. Double click transform. Double click drivers. Scroll down to smooth transform. Now you'll need to do this for each of the two components that you just created. Go to the speed setting. Drag the smooth speed into one of the two slots. 
Remember, grab the word, not the number, or the checkbox, or whatever. You always grab the title. And then you'll go back to, you'll go to active. Get the enabled state of the smooth transform. Drop it into the stripe list. So we'll do that again with the left hand one. The enabled state is going to go into smooth transform active. Smooth transform speed is going to be for the smooth speed at the bottom. Once you've set up the smooth transform, find the root object of your avatar, grab onto it, and put it into local space. Disable on statue is going to be all the different pools that need to get disabled. There's five main things. One of them is in the head proxy. You scroll down, you're going to see Visium Analyzer. Grab the word enabled, put it on this list. We're going to click on the root of the object, and the very top component is VRIK. The word enabled gets added to the list. Anywhere will do. Then we have to look through the hierarchy of the character's armature. We go centered root, root node, armature, hips, spine, chest. And I would say focus on the word chest here. I click on that button on the top right to make it so you're only seeing these things because we need something from the head, which is going to be the eye manager. Take its enabled state, drop it on that list. Scroll down here on this eye manager list to eye rotation driver. Drive its enabled state by dragging and dropping it on that list. Next, we're going to find your shoulders and go down to your hands. If you went to the fingers, you went too far. So if you see this, make sure that you click on this. Sometimes it's called wrist. The top component is called hand poser. We want to drive that state. We'll do this for the other arm as well. Those are the things that all avatars share, but every avatar is a little different. Ears on this move. My hair doesn't, but often it does. You might have tails, whatever, a dress. All these things have dynamic bones. Those need to get turned off as well, because I don't want to be able to move my ears when I'm a statue. That'd be too cute. So in my specific case, on my head, I've got my ears. And the dynamic bones are somewhere along that list. Wherever you see dynamic bone chain, grab the word, drive its enabled state by adding it to that list. If you're running out of space, you can always add more. Other than dynamic bones, sometimes avatars have specific things that make it uh, function with life that we need to remove because we're statuifying it. In this case, we have something that's making the tail wiggle. Now, if I didn't know already, then I would say I would just start poking around things until I see different components, and I would try disabling them and seeing that, oh, okay, that worked. So let's drive its enabled state to be turned off. So name tags are something else. You'll need a custom name tag if you want to have that turned off when you get petrified. There's plenty of tutorials out there on how to get a custom name tag. And you see things are getting turned pink as they're getting driven. We went to this name badge and we wanted to just get turned off. Uh, can't. It's already being driven by something else. So we're going to give it a parent. We can turn off the parent, which turns off everything else that it's parenting. Take the active state of that, drive it. Now we need to duplicate this avatar's mesh, so it's basically wearing a skin of itself over itself. Creepy. Let's do it. Centered root, root node, select its body, and duplicate it. You're going to want to name whatever body is lower on the list as body normal. You're going to want to name whatever body is above it as body statue. Let's say you have a custom texture set up, something that uses your fancy normal map or whatever, and you want that to be the default. Something needs to happen. Neos will not remember that this material exists uh, in another world, unless it's saved onto the avatar itself. So I can do that by double-clicking on statuification here. It's highlighted even though it stays white. And if you click on the star, that gives it an empty object, a child as it's called. I'll change the name of this to statue texture. In order to save the material from here to here, we can recreate it. In this statue texture thing I made, I'll click on attach component assets, then materials, and this is whatever type of material you have, but it's probably PBS metallic. Now we can recreate the material here by grabbing each texture from that material and bringing it over like this. Normal goes to that spot, height to that spot, the metallic to that spot. Then in body, statue, whatever you set up, all the different materials that you want 
um, whatever materials you have here, we can take the title of the component and drop it into the materials list. Make sure you do this before you set up the material slot assigner. Otherwise, it's going to make one texture, all of your textures on your avatar. You'll notice that something has changed about this avatar. Its eyes are no longer blinking. The body was duplicated and only one set of eyes was set to be able to blink. And that was the original, the one that we duplicated from, body statue. So if we look in body statue here and scroll down to all the different visemes, we're going to see that the eyes are blinking here. Every couple seconds, they'll go up and down like that. But the body normal, it does not have these two blinking. We need to set that up. I'll go through the armature here and find the eye manager again. Hips, spine, chest, neck, head. And we have eye manager here. We're going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Just for note, it's under eye linear driver, but all you have to do is scroll to the very bottom where you can click on add. This is adding however many eyes we need, which are two more. They're called two and three, but those are technically three and four. Your avatar might just have one blinking visine. If that's the case, keep this part here, which side it is, as combined. But if you have both eyes blinking separately, you'll need two of these. And switching one to the left, grab the blend shape for the eye that needs to be changed. Make sure that the side for each eye matches whatever it says. And put this into open close target. Do this for both eyes. Open close target. If you have more meshes on your model, you're going to need to make this duplication thing and name them appropriately. Anything that ends in the statue has a statue texture there. The default if it gets turned into that. And we're going to start by going over if you have an avatar that does not have an opacity layer so it can have the transitional effect, but it only has a normal default avatar that you want to just turn smoothly all over at once into a new material. So we're skipping material lip. We're going to go to body normal active. We're going to double click body normal here, grab the word active at the top, drop it under that list. Do the same thing for the body statue. Active spot, drop it on the list. Now you're going to notice that the body statue goes inactive. We don't need to render two avatars here until it's being statuified. Next we have material slot assigner, duplicate component. You're going to need to duplicate this component for every single material that you have on the statue parts of the avatar. So I'm going to click on body statue here. If I had more materials, I'd click on duplicate. But I'm going to grab the number, not the word, and I'm going to drag this over here and drop this into one of the null spots. If I needed more of them, just have to duplicate. Depending on how many materials I had, let's say I had more, I'd grab this one here, and I'd also bring it over here into another null slot. If I had another mesh, I would do the same thing. Click the statue, find the materials list, grab the number, and drop it into that null slot. Under no cutout system, we have default blend mode, and we have a value here that we can enter. If you look at the materials property for your avatar, your blend mode is here. Sometimes it's opaque, sometimes it's cutout. Look for that, set it here, double click on material blend modes, grab the word blend mode, and drop it onto one of these drive lists. If you have more materials, you'll need to do this and add to the list for every material. Next, we go to material albedo color, and we're gonna take the albedo color, the tint, as it were, and we're gonna drive that as well. If you have anything that is colored or tinted, like your hair is green or something like that, it's not the normal default, this will not work. You will need to take your texture outside of Neos, tint it the color that you want, and then bring it back in to set it up here. And that's it for the no cutout system. That's it for the setup. Now it's all about the options down here on what you want your avatar to have specifically. Otherwise, you're all good to go, and we're almost done. Now the sound system here is going to play a crackling stone sound when you get petrified that's going to only be heard by you. If you don't want that, you can just delete this or make it inactive. Vision lock is going to make it that when you're petrified, you won't even be able to look around. Your vision's going to be frozen, staring at the same way, even if your headset's aimed elsewhere. If you don't want this, delete it. If you do want it, just double click the head proxy here, find your head proxy, and drag the word head proxy into that null slot. Vision overlay is a filter that you can look through while you're petrified. If you want this, you're going to have to set up a single texture that's going to work for you. Unfortunately, that can't be dynamic if I shoot you with some gold gun. You can't see gold. For this, we're going to open setup here, and again, it's going to ask for a head proxy. Grab the word head proxy, drop it in there. If you do want your vision to be frozen when you're petrified, you need to find vision overlay here. 
go into head position and hold on to this blinder. This is going to need to go into your head armature. So we'll go along the spine, chest, neck, head. And this is where we want to drop the blinder. Make sure this is the last step that you do. Other things need to have happened before this in a specific order. If you want to change what that texture is, you're going to find that in the statuification setup. The very first thing, Vision Alpha. Click this up arrow and replace this texture with whatever you want to look through. In which case, I'm just going to take the stone from the material I set up as the default, drop it in there. So this avatar is all ready to go. We can go ahead and adjust some settings as a default. Now, different tools might hit you later on that are going to turn you at different speeds um, and mess with some of these settings, but you can do your default speed. We'll say that 0.1 is extremely slow, 1 is extremely fast. So try to think of it as like a percentage of time in between. I'm not exactly sure how this works, but I'm going to change it to 0.5 and you'll see that speed. Max blindness is how blind you're going to be on a scale from 0 to 1. If you want to be 50% blind, change that to 0 0.5. All right, so I've got the avatar set up here. I'm gonna take the statue tool and aim it at myself to test it out. We have success. Any of the old statuification tools are gonna to work just fine. This is one of the new ones you're gonna find in the tool part of the petrification folder. You can take any material, load it up into here, and then when you fire at an avatar, it's gonna change that specific material. gold, metal, plastic, whatever you'd like. Setting up that cool transitional effect requires substance painter and a little bit of elbow grease and probably another video that I'll make. If you happen to have one of those textures, which looks like this because you can see through it, then we're going to set it up. If you don't happen to have one of those textures, then thanks for watching. That's all you need to know. But if you do, let's get started. You didn't need to follow along with the no cut system, but if you did, you can go ahead and get rid of any references by clicking this icon next to all the things. Just make it so that none of this was technically changed at all. So what we need to do is we need to get the avatar's body normal textures. Click on this little button here and open this. We want to take our new texture, the one that you can see through, and we want to put it in this slot. You can hold it with one hand, fire it with the other, and it's going to kind of look something like this. We want to go down here to where it says opaque and change that to cutout. Then we want to grab the word alpha cutoff, and we want to add this to the drive list under material lerp. If you have any other textures that also happen to have this opacity thing, do exactly this and add it to the list. So here we are again. Let me go ahead and test this out. Take the statue tool, take a material, load it in. Let's see. And that's everything. Thanks for watching.